What is linear independence? Here's the definition. A set of vectors v1, v2 down to vn in Rn is linearly independent if the vector equation x1 v1 plus x2 times v2 plus all the way down to xn times vn equals 0 has only the trivial solution, which means that all the x's have to be 0. Let's label this equation star so we can refer back to it. So in other words, v1 down to vn is linearly independent if the only way to make star true, that is that equation true, is to choose all the x's equal to 0. Or equivalently, the only way to make a linear combination of the v1 down to vn equal to 0 is to choose all 0 coefficients. These are both equivalent to saying that the set is linearly independent. If star can be solved with one or more of the xi not equal to zero, we say that the set v1 down to vn is linearly dependent and that star is a dependence relation. So note, the language, the set v1 down to vn is linearly independent or dependent, and the language the vectors v1 down to vn are linearly independent and dependent or dependent is used interchangeably. The language on the left being more formal language and the language on the right is sort of informal because after all linear independence or dependence really just refers to a set a full collection of vectors not individual vectors. So for example, if you take 2 times this vector, 1 comma 2, plus the vector 1 comma 1, plus negative 1 times the vector 3 comma 5, you get 0, 0. Thus, the set consisting of these three vectors is linearly dependent. And this equation is a dependence relation. Note that the vector in the middle of the equation, 1 comma 1, actually has a coefficient of 1. But with a coefficient of 1 we often leave it off just for simplicity of notation. Let's look at another example. This set of two vectors in R3 is linearly independent. And why is that the case? If we form the equation x1 times the first vector plus x2 times the second vector, set that equal to 0, and see what that means for x1 and x2. Well, the first scalar product is just equal to the vector x1, 0, 0. The second scalar product is equal to the vector 0, 0, x2. When you add these two together, you get the vector x1, 0, x2. And setting that equal to 0 implies x1 has got to be equal to 0 and x2 has also got to be equal to 0. And therefore, these vectors are linearly independent. Let's unpack the meaning of linear dependence. Check out this example. So suppose that v1 is equal to the vector 1, 2, and v2 is equal to the vector 1, 1. v3, the vector 3, 5. In the example above, we saw that 0 is equal to 2 times v1 plus v2 plus negative 1 times v3. So this is a dependence relation. What we're going to do is solve for v1 in this dependence relation by pulling the v1 term to the left, 
and then dividing both sides of the equation by negative 2. That gives us v1 is this linear combination of v2 and v3. That is, v1 is in the span of v2 and v3. So in general, the set v1 down to vn is linearly dependent precisely when at least one of the vectors is in the span of the others. And thus, the set v1 down to vn is linearly independent when none of the vectors is in the span of the others. To understand this better, let's look at some graphical examples. We'll start with two vectors. So suppose v1 points in this direction, v2 points in the opposite direction, In other words, these vectors are pointing, in this case, in the opposite direction. They could be pointing in the same direction. But in either case, v2 is some constant times v1. Well, that's a dependence relation. That is, v2 is in the span of v1. So these are linearly dependent. Let's now see what happens when two vectors point in different directions like this. Well, in this case, v2 is not some constant times v1. It's not in the span of v1, and v1 is not in the span of v2. These are linearly independent vectors. Take a look at an example of three vectors. Say v1 points up here, v2 points in the same direction, v3 points in an opposite direction. So in this case, say the vectors are all pointing the same or in opposite directions. These are linearly dependent. Both v2 and v3 are in the span of v1. Suppose that v1 points in a certain direction, v2 points in a different direction, Here's the plane containing v1 and v2. And suppose that v3 lies in the same plane. In other words, all vectors lie in one plane. Well, this is also a case where they're linearly dependent. v3 is in the span of v1 and v2. Suppose, on the other hand, v1 points in a certain direction, v2 points in another direction. Here's the plane containing them. And suppose that v3 points entirely outside of that plane. So v3 is not in the span of v1 and v2, nor is any of them in the span of the others. This is the case where the vectors are linearly independent. So why is linear independence important? And here's a partial answer. Again, this is just a preview without details. details we take it up in a different lecture. Here's one reason why this concept is important. Independence slash dependence gives us information about the number of solutions of the vector equation x1 v1 plus x2 times v2 all the way down to xn times vn equals some vector b. If a solution exists then it is unique, that is only one solution, if the set v1 down to vn is linearly independent. And it's not unique, that is there are infinitely many solutions, if the set is linearly dependent. Here's another reason why the concept of linear independence is important. In a sense, linearly independent sets are efficient because you can't remove any of the vectors from the set without changing the span of the set. 
If a set of vectors is linearly dependent, we often remove whatever vectors are dependent to obtain a linearly independent set with the same span. This is called a basis, this new set. And basis is one of the all important concepts in linear algebra. So we'll see more in a different lecture. Let's review what we covered. Linear independence, linear dependence, what is meant by a dependence relation, and examples of linearly independent and linearly dependent sets.